Hello students, this is Professor C. A. Tawal Tucker. In this particular video, we are going to discuss RTP of group 2 of paper 5 that is advanced accounting in that accounting. So this video will contain only accounting standards of paper 5 that is advanced accounts. Let us start one by one. First question is on AS5, net profit loss for the period, prior period items and changes in accounting policies. State whether the following items are example of changes in accounting policy, change in accounting estimates, extraordinary item, prior period items, ordinary activity. Discuss. The first is actual bad debts turning out to be more than provision. So sir, the amount which we estimated earlier is less as compared to the actual bad debts which is occurring right now. So can I say this is nothing but changes in accounting estimate. Second, change from the cost model to revaluation model for measurement of carrying amount of PP. As per AS10, there are two concepts or I can say two models which are available for valuation of PP. First is nothing but historic cost, second is nothing but the revalued price. So sir, earlier we were using historic cost, now we are shifting to revalued price. So sir, that is nothing but changes in accounting policy. Basically, accounting policy means, sir, basic accounting rules or principles plus methods to adopt such rules or principles. So, sir, there are multiple methods. If we change from one method to another method, it is known as changes in accounting policy. Third one, government grant receivable as compensation. Dear students, remember one thing. Compensation will be always towards some losses occurred in the past or something like that. So, if there is a loss, loss is considered as extraordinary item. So, compensation received for that loss will also be considered as extraordinary item. Generally, if I am talking about receipt of government grant is to be treated as ordinary activity only. But since this is in the nature of compensation for the loss or expenses, that is only reason it is to be considered as extraordinary item. So, I will just write here, first one was the changes in accounting. estimates second was changes in accounting policy third one is nothing but so it is to be treated as extraordinary item change from 12 percent to 15 percent retrospective because it is nothing but related to business only so it is a part of ordinary activity but I will suggest in ordinary activity, in ordinary activity, a separate disclosure needs to be given because the effect is given retrospectively. There might be the size of the transaction, the amount of the transaction will be bigger as compared to the normal transaction. So we have to give disclosure as exceptional item. Since they have not mentioned, they are not asking us in ordinary activity whether it is a normal item or exceptional item, they are not asking, but still on a safer side, you can disclose. Change in the method of depreciation from the straight line to WDV. So this is nothing but changes in accounting estimates. Changes in accounting estimates. I will repeat once again. Sir, depreciation accounting is nothing but the accounting policy. But the method that is SLM and WDV is nothing but the changes in accounting estimate. Because definitely when we calculate depreciation, Certain components which we use for calculation of depreciation, those components are estimated figure only and not the actual. Government grant become refundable, so this is nothing but the extraordinary activity. Next, applying 10% depreciation instead of 15% of the furniture, so this is error, prior period item, change in useful life of fixed asset. So, so change in useful life of fixed asset, that is nothing but changes in accounting estimates changes in accounting estimates we can just quickly see the answers which are given here actual bad debts turning out to be more than provision changes in accounting estimates change from the cost model to revaluation re model change in accounting policy government grant receivable as compensation sir extraordinary item trading operating lease as finance prior per item capitalization of borrowing cost on working capital prior per item Legislative change is having a long term retrospective effect, ordinary activity only in that we can give disclosure, separate disclosure as exceptional item. Change in method of depreciation from state line to WDV, accounting estimates, 
government grant become refundable extraordinary applying 10 percent depreciation instead of 15 percent prior to item and change in useful life is changes in accounting estimates okay let us continue with the next question a7 construction on 1st december 2021 GR Construction Company Limited undertook a contract to construct a building for rupees 40 lakh. So can I say this is nothing but the contract revenue. On 31st March 2022, the company found that it had already spent 32.5 lakhs on the construction. Okay, so I will write here till 31st March 2022. Cost incurred is 32.5 lakhs. 32.5 lakhs. Next, they are saying additional cost of completion is estimated at 15.1 lakh. 15.1 lakh. That is nothing but the further estimated cost of completion cost of completion you can just do the total 32.5 plus 15.1 that will give me 47.6 lakhs total contract cost contract revenue contract cost sir contract revenue is 45 lakhs contract cost is 47.6 lakhs so can I say there is a contract loss, contract loss of 2.6 lakhs. Now, standard says that is nothing but the AS7. AS7 says if in any of the particular year, if you come to know that in this particular contract there is a loss, then we have to recognize the entire loss in the first year. I can say in the year in which we came to know. So we have to recognize the entire loss with the help of provision. With the help of provision now let us see how we are supposed to recognize first of all we will calculate percentage of completion percentage of completion that is cost incurred till date 32.5 lakhs divided by total contract cost 47.6 lakhs into 100 so 32.5 divided by 47.6 so that comes to 68.27 percentage Revenue to be recognized. Revenue to be recognized. We are talking about revenue to be recognized in the financial statement for the year ending 31st March 2022. You can see I have mentioned here 31st March 2022. So revenue to be recognized is total revenue is how much? 45 lakhs into 68.27 percentage or you can take to 8 percentage. 45 into 68.2 okay 30.73 lakhs okay so revenue to be recognized is 30.73 lakhs if i'm making a small pnl right contract cost contract revenue so contract cost in the first year year one is how much 32.5 lakhs Contract revenue to be recognized 30.73 lakhs. But boss, we have to recognize the entire contract loss of how much, sir? Entire contract loss of 2.6 lakhs. So, say we have to recognize the entire contract loss of 2.6 lakhs in the first year itself. So, if we close, we will come to know how much amount of provision we are supposed to create. How much amount of provision? So, let us calculate 30.73. 2.6 minus 32.5 so we have to create provision for 0.83 lakhs so this provision we will create in the first year itself and we will recognize the entire loss of 2.6 lakhs so what amount should be charged to revenue in the final accounts for the year ended 31st march 2022 as per the provision of a7 definitely they have not given any information with respect to escalation they are not giving any information with respect to escalation clause so if escalation clause would have been given we would have increased the revenue also they have not given any information so we have concluded that in this particular question there is a loss only okay so we can see the solution here so total estimated cost of the contract is 47.6 lakhs percentage of completion is 68.28 
proportion of total contract value recognized as revenue that is nothing but 30.73 lakhs total cost of construction is 47.6 less total contract price is 45 total forcible loss is nothing but 2.6 so we have to recognize entire 2.6 lakhs worth of loss in the first year only with the help of provision if you want to show as the amount of provision you can disclose separately else they have not asked you to calculate the amount of provision separately so you can just directly show the loss of 2.6 lakhs also okay let us move to the next question as 9 revenue recognition pqr limited sells agriculture product to dealers one of the conditions of sale is that interest is at the rate of 2% per month for delayed payments percentage of interest recovery is only 10% on such overdue outstanding due to various reasons so they are saying in past we have recovered only 10% of the total interest which is actually we should have recovered but we have recovered only 10% of the actual and that too also due to various reasons so obviously in coming period also we will recover this 10% of the total interest or not that is not also certain because out of total interest they have recovered 10% it may happen that we will recover in next year only 5% it may happen that we will not recover any amount of interest so first of all there is no certainty with respect to ultimate collection during the year 2021-22 the company wants to recognize the entire interest receivable do you agree the answer is no they cannot recognize let us see the answer as per AS9 revenue recognition with the ability to assess the ultimate collection with reasonable certainty is lacking at the time of raising any claim example for escalation of price export incentives interest etc revenue recognition is postponed to the extent of uncertainty involved in such case it may be appropriate to recognize revenue only when it is reasonably certain that the ultimate collection will be made where there is no uncertainty as to ultimate collection revenue is recognized at the time of sale or rendering of services even though payments are made by installments okay pqr limited cannot recognize the interest amount unless the company actually receives it 10% rate of recovery on overdue outstanding is also an estimate based on the previous record and is not certain they have clearly mentioned that this 10 percent is also not certain that is based on the previous recovery hence the company's advice to recognize the interest receivable only on receipt basis it means once the certainty arises then only they can recognize okay let us move to the next question as 17 question number 13 similar question is there in jkc even for question number 14 similar question is there in jkc textbook question number 15 similar question is there in jkc textbook the senior accountant of amf limited gives the following data regarding its five segments so they have given five segments and they are providing segment assets information segment result and segment revenue information okay and then they are saying the senior accountant is of the opinion that the segment p alone should be reportable is he justified in his view examine his opinion in light of the provision as 17 segment reporting now dear students as per AS 17 as per AS 70 we have to check criteria for reportable segment which is given by para 27 a b c 28 and 29 so we will check based on para 27 a b c 28 and 29 which segment is reportable so here if you can see segment revenue is nothing but para 27 a this is 27 b and this is para 27 c okay let us check one by one we can check first para 27 c also because all these paras are not compulsory all together should be fulfilled it is any of the para is fulfilled then it becomes a reportable segment okay first is segment asset which says segment asset should be more than or equal to 10 percent of the total segment asset now total is 160 160 10 percent is nothing but 16 so this is a reportable 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 so sir pqrs reportable segment okay let us check para 27 b segment result which says segment result that is profit or loss should be more than or equal to 10 percent of the higher of two first is all segments in profits and second is all segments in losses so if all segments in profits if i want to calculate then 10 plus 10 plus 30 so that is nothing but 50 all segments and losses if I want to talk then 190 plus 10 that is nothing but 200 whichever is higher that is nothing but 200 
10 percent of 200 is nothing but 20 so can i say sir while checking 27b we have to apply modulus to all the figures of all the results of all the segments so this is reportable and this is reportable so sir under para 27 and para 27b under para 27 and para 27b sir all segments are reportable segment no need to check para 27a also but let us check sir segment revenue says it should be more than or equal to 10 percent of total segment revenue total segment revenue is 900 10 percent of 900 is nothing but 90 so reportable is the first segment rest all are not reportable as per para 27a but those are reportable under para 27b and 27c so here all segments are reputable segments so in the answer we have to mention the conditions and we have to conclude it let us see the answer as per as 17 segment reporting business segment or geographical segment should be identified as a reputable segment if first para 27a its revenue from sales to external customers and from other transaction with other segments is a 10 percent or more of the total revenue external and internal of all these segments so in para 27a if you remember in segment revenue we consider internal external both next 27b its segment result whether profit or loss is a 10 percent or more of the combined result of all segments in profits and combined result of all segments in losses whichever is greater in absolute amount okay then para 27c its segment assets are 10 percent or more of the total assets of all the segments accordingly on the basis of revenue from sales criteria p is reportable on the basis of result criteria p and t reportable on the basis of asset criteria all segment except t are reportable since all these segments are covered in at least one of the above criteria all segments have to be reported upon in accordance with as 17 hence the opinion of the chief accountant that only segment b is reportable is wrong okay let us move to the next question as 18 related party disclosure is remuneration paid to board of directors a related party transaction the answer is yes because definitely board of directors are nothing but the kmps what do you mean by kmp sir kmp means those who are having pdc rights that is nothing but the planning directing and controlling they can significantly influence the decision making of the organization so they will be considered as a related party for the organization and the disclosure needs to be given so answer is already given here you can see your person who do not have the authority and responsibility for pdc planning directing and controlling the activities of the enterprise would not be kmp further as per companies act 2013 a related party includes a director or his relatives the act defines a director as a director appointed to the board of company hence remuneration paid to the board of directors will be considered as related party transaction okay let us move to the next question as 19 leases when limited has entered into a three-year lease arrangement with tanya sports club in respect of fitness equipments costing 16,99,999.5 the annual lease payments to be made at the end of each year are structured in such a way that the sum of the present value of the lease payments and that of the total residual value together equals to the cost of the equipments leased out matlab means they are saying they are saying at irr at irr PV of CI is equal to PV of CO. IRR is nothing but the of return which says present value of cash inflow that is nothing but the lease rental plus residual value. If we calculate the present value of lease payments, see here they are mentioning present value of lease payments and that of the residual value that is nothing but the present value of cash inflow together equal to the cost of the equipment that is nothing but the present value of cash outflow. It means here. We are saying this particular problem we have to solve from the point of view of lesser this particular problem we have to solve from the point of view of lesser in the books of lesser if you remember at IRR PV of CI is equal to PV of CO and here it concludes that this is a kind of finance lease only because here being a lesser I am not interested in the asset I am interested in the finance income okay the unguaranteed residual value of the equipment at the expiry of the lease is estimated to be 1,33,500. The asset would revert to the lesser at the end of the lease. Definitely, if asset is going to be returned by the 
lessy to the lesser then definitely there will be no concept of grv that is nothing but the guaranteed residual value so in this question so total residual value is nothing but the ugrv only that is unguaranteed residual value given that the implicit rate of interest is 10 percent you are required to calculate the amount of the annual lease payment and the unearned finance income okay so they are asking us to calculate annual lease payment and unearned finance income a similar question is there in the jkc textbook discounting factor at 10 percent for year one two three are given so we have to use these are only okay so let us quickly solve i will write here books of lesser your cash flow discounting factor at the rate 10 percent present value solution format may vary from student presentation may vary but the concept will remain same so there are three years given one two and three so i will write one more time year three so this is nothing but the lease rental lease rental lease rental and here it is ugrv because being a lesser i'm going lease rental plus total residual value in this particular question total residual value is nothing but the ugrv only okay now we can see at irr pv of ci is equal to pv of co we have to write the cash flow so lease rentals are not known so UGRV is available. UGRV is 1,33,500. 1,33,500. So whatever will be the total of these cash flow is known as a gross investment. Because gross investment means lease rental plus GRV plus UGRV. Now discounting factors are given. 0 0.909. 0 0.826. 0 0.751. Here also 0.751 now so this is nothing but gross investment and pv of gross investment pv of gross investment is nothing but the net investment and at irr net investment is nothing but the fair value of the asset only and here the fair value of the asset is how much 16 lakh 99 16 lakh 99999.50 why sir so sir at irr at irr PV of CI is equal to PV of CO. So present value of cash outflow that is nothing but the fair value of the asset only. And the fair value of the asset is nothing but 1699999.5 in this given question. So present value of cash outflow is 1699999. So present value of cash inflow what we are going to get to sir in present value of cash inflow we are going to get lease rental plus ugrv which is known as sir present value of gross investment that is nothing but net investment and net investment in this entire financial arrangement is how much sir, this fair value of the asset only we have invested or i can say there is a outflow of 16,99,999.5 in this entire financial arrangement okay let us move further so, sir, this should be, this should be equivalent to fair value of the asset only. Now, we can calculate this figure that is present value of UGRV, 1,33,500 into 0.751. So, that will give us 1,258.50. Now, we can calculate the balancing figure that is nothing but the, this amount. We can calculate this amount. How we will calculate? So, sir, 1699999.5 less 1,258.50. So, that comes to rupees 15,99,741. So, sir, this is nothing but the present value of lease rentals of three years. So, if I'm talking about these lease rentals, so lease rentals of three years, if you calculate present value, then you will get 15,99,741. So, now here, if I want to make some formula, so present value of lease rental, present value of lease rental of three years is equal to 
सर लीज रेंटल पर एन एम इन टू एन्यूटी फैक्टर एन्यूटी फैक्टर इज नथिंग बट समेशन ऑफ दीज थ्री इयर्स डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर सो सिंपल लॉजिक इफ इफ यू डिवाइड इफ यू डिवाइड फिफ्टीन लैख नाइन्टी नाइन थाउजेंड सेवन फोर्टी वन बाय दिस एन्यूटी फैक्टर ऑफ Discounting factors of three years, then you will get the lease rental per annum. So let me write here present value of lease rental of three years is nothing but fifteen lakh ninety nine seven forty one. Okay, lease rental per annum we don't know. Annuity factor. Let us take the summation of discounting factor of three years. Point nine zero nine plus point eight two six plus point seven five one. So it comes to two point four eight six. So we will write here two point four eight six. So we will get lease rental per annum is equal to this PV of lease rental of three years divided by annuity factor. So it is coming as rupees six lakh forty three thousand five hundred per annum. So so this is nothing but the lease rental per annum. So we got this lease rental that is this amount. So we have already calculated lease rental amount. Now what they are asking in the question annual lease payment and unearned finance income we have to calculate unearned finance income unearned finance income is nothing but the gross investment minus net investment now gross investment here it is lease rental plus ugrv sir net investment is nothing but the fair value of the asset only because at irr pv of ci is equal to pv of co that is nothing but the fair value of the asset only now If I'm calculating lease rental, lease rental is six lakh forty three five hundred per annum into three years plus UGRV plus UGRV. UGRV is how much? One thirty three, one thirty three five hundred. So this is how we will get the gross investment. Basically, this amount only. This amount gross investment. Minus net investment is sixteen lakh ninety nine nine ninety nine point five zero. So let me calculate your so it is coming as three lakh sixty four thousand fifty paise. So this is my unearned finance income. So we can see the solution now. Three lakh sixty-four thousand fifty paise is an underfinance income. Okay, let us move ahead. Let us go for AS twenty EPS earnings per share. Following information is supplied by K Limited. Number of shares outstanding prior to right issue is two lakh fifty thousand shares. Right issue, right issue. Two new share for each five outstanding shares. So if I want to write here existing and rights, two new shares for five outstanding, two point five lakhs existing. If we cross multiply, we will get one lakh shares, which is anyways given. Right issue price is ninety eight. Last date of exercising right is thirtieth of June. So can I say if I'm talking about Thirty of June. Then can I say after three months? This is nothing but the financial year only. That is from first April, first April to thirty first March next year. So if we are exercising rights, last date is nothing but the thirty of June. So can I say after April, May, June? After three months, we are issuing the right shares. Fair value of one equity share immediately prior to exercise of the rights on thirty of June is nothing but this is nothing but the come right price. This is nothing but the come right price, the price which is inflated because of the right issue announcement, or I can say the price which is including the effect of right issue news. Okay. Now, net profit to equity shareholders they have given for two financial years. You are required to calculate the basic earnings per share as per S twenty EPS. Okay. Now, sir, here the rights are announced, and it is going to be issued in twenty one twenty two. It means in this particular financial year. Okay, so first of all, we have to calculate the basic EPS, BAPS, BAPS for the previous year and the current year. So let me calculate for the previous year first. That is nothing but two thousand twenty twenty one. Two thousand twenty twenty one. Two thousand twenty twenty one. Two thousand twenty twenty 
2021. Basic EPS is equal to so net profit available for equity shareholders is nothing but 50 lakhs divided by number of equity shares that is nothing but 2 lakh 50 thousand shares. Correct. So it is rupees 20 per share. Next is nothing but 2021-22. Now here first of all we have to calculate theoretical X right price. Theoretical X right price. Which says fair value of the existing shares before right issue. So 2,50,000 existing shares into come right price. Before right issue the price was 102. So into 102. Plus proceeds from the right issue. So 1 like right shares issued at a concessional rate of 98. Divide by so total number of shares after right issue. Can I say that is 2,50 plus 1 lakh. That will give me 3,50,000 shares. So let me calculate theoretical x right price. So 2 lakh 50 into 102. So it comes to 100.86. If you want to take for 4 decimal you can take. But I will be taking up to 2 decimal 100.86. So this is theoretical x right price. Next step we have to calculate right factor. Now the formula for right factor is nothing but sir so come right price divided by theoretical x right price. So 102 divided by 100.86 that comes to 1.01. .01. Now what do you mean by this 1.01? .01? It means before right issue for getting 102 rupees companies issuing one share. After right issue for getting same 102 rupees. Company is now supposed to issue 1.0 share because now after right issue if company is issuing still one share company will not get 102 rupees company will get only 100.86 rupees so after right issue if company wants the same 102 rupees then company is supposed to issue some extra share so on every one share 0 0.01 share extra so sir that is nothing but the explanation to right factor now total number of total number of existing shares so existing shares are nothing but 2 lakh 50 into 0 0.01 if i do then i will get equivalent then i will get equivalent bonus shares now what do you mean by equivalent bonus shares so wait a second I'll write your equivalent Bonus share. So equivalent bonus share is nothing but so two lakh fifty thousand into point zero one. So sir, it will give me two thousand five hundred shares. So these are nothing but the equivalent bonus shares. I will explain what do you mean by equivalent bonus shares in next one hour or two minutes. Please pay attention. Total number of existing shares is two lakh fifty. Now why we have applied this point zero one on the existing number of shares? First of all, that I will explain. First of all. The explanation of the right factor says after right issue, now company if supposed to raise the funds of 102 rupees, company wants to raise the funds of 102 rupees, then company is supposed to issue 0 0.01 share extra. Well, on every one share, 0 0.01 share extra. So, can I say bonus is always calculated on the existing shares only? So, on one share, 0 0.01 extra. So, on 2.5 lakh shares. How many shares extra? So if we calculate this, we will get equivalent number of bonus shares. I am repeating once again for the last time. Right factor means what? Sir, before right issue, for raising 102 rupees, company used to issue one share. Now after right issue, the price has become 100.86. It means after right issue, if company wants same 102 rupees again, then company is supposed to issue Sir, so 1.01 share, then only company will get 102 rupees. So, on every one share, now company is supposed to issue 0 0.01 share extra. So, on every one share, 0 0.01 share extra. So, in that particular case, in that particular case, I will say, 
total number of existing shares are nothing but 250 so on 250000 just how many extra shares free shares equivalent free shares company is supposed to issue that is nothing but 2500 now i write here total number of right shares a total number of shares issued under right so sir that is nothing but 1 lakh now i will say out of this 1 lakh equivalent number of bonus shares i'm repeating once again company has not issued actual bonus shares not the entire shares free of cost here i'm saying equivalent number of bonus shares that is nothing but 2500 shares and balancing figure is equal to equivalent number of shares issued for full consideration that is nothing but sir 97500 shares so what we have done here first of all we have done the bifurcation of this 1 lakh shares actually these 1 lakh shares issued at concessional rate actually these 1 lakh shares issued at concessional rate now we are just calculating equivalent number of shares because see when we issue right shares in right shares there are two components first component is nothing but the factor of the bonus issue and another component is nothing but the factor of the full issue see let us say example there is a share of rupees 10 i am issuing for rupees 6 at concessional rate so can i say 4 rupees is nothing but the concession and the consideration is 6 so so if i am issuing one share which is having a value of rupees 10 but issuing for 6 so can i say there is a one component of bonus and another component for consideration so here we are calculating equivalent number of bonus shares and equivalent number of shares issued for full consideration let us say example company is issuing bonus shares then how many free shares company will give and company is issuing equity shares for a full consideration then how many number of equity shares company will issue for full consideration are you able to understand this so here we have just calculated the equivalent number of shares why we have calculated you will come to know if you remember in case of bonus issue we calculate restated eps of the previous year and in the current year also we give the impact of the bonus shares for the entire 12 months so for that only we have done this and we want to calculate here veins if i want to calculate here veins so existing 250000 shares outstanding for entire 12 months now these are the equivalent bonus shares these will be considered as outstanding for entire 12 months plus this 97500 shares outstanding for only 9 months because against this 97500 shares we have received the consideration and that consideration we have received on 30th june so so it is outstanding for only 9 months so we have to calculate Veins, weighted average number of equity shares 97,500 into 9 divided by 12 plus 2,50 plus 2,500. So it comes to 325,625. Now we will calculate babes for the current year. So the current year in Paish, net profit available for equity shares is 75 lakhs. Divide by 325,625 shares rupees 23.03 per share now let us calculate the restated eps now restated eps of the previous year if we calculate restated eps of the previous year then it is rupees 50 lakhs divide by 250,000 shares plus 2,500. We have to give the effect of those equivalent number of bonus shares in the previous year EPS also. So, sir, it gives me 50 lakhs divided by 250 to 500. So, it is 19.80 per share. So, let us see the solution. If you can see, solution of question number 18. Theoretical X rate price is 100.86. Right factor is 1.01. .01 previous year eps is 20 previous year restated is 19.80 current year eps is 23.03 so this question is over let us move to the next question as24 
discontinuing operation a consumer goods producer has changed the product line as follows dish washing bar clothes washing bar if you can see here initially initially the production per month in both the products was same over the period of time they have reduced the production of dish washing bar and they have increased the production of clothes washing bar yes or no okay so in that particular case i will say here there is something which is called as gradual or evolutionary phasing out which should not be considered as a discontinuing operation let us read further company has enforced a gradual enforcement of a change in the product line on the basis of overall plan the board of director has passed a resolution in march 2021 to this effect the company follows calendar year as its accounting year you are required to advise the company whether it should be treated as discontinuing operation or not as per as 24 the answer is no because the gradual or evolutionary phasing out of a product line or a class of services will not be considered as a discontinuing operation discount disclosure is not required so first of all they have given the definition of discontinuing operation then exceptions are given like say example grad evolutionary phasing out of a product line or a class of service will not be considered as a discontinuing operation shift of business will not be considered as a discontinuing operation any operation is closed down just for the cost saving or i can say for operational efficiency then in that case it will not be considered as a discontinuing operation and they have mentioned the conclusion let us move to the next question intangible asset as per the provision of as 26 how would you deal to the following solution i will just one second and mention question number 19 is also similar to jkc textbook only question number 20 is something really very important and interesting question please pay attention first rupees 23 lakhs paid by a manufacturing company to the legal advisor for defending the patent of a product is treated as a capital expenditure so they have treated this amount as a capital expenditure they have capitalized as intangible asset so we have to give comment what we are supposed to do now first of all let us understand in case of asset we have seen the assets recognition criteria asset recognition criteria there are two points first point says if it is probable that the future economic benefits associated with asset will flow to the entity then only we can recognize that item as an asset and second cost of the asset can be measured reliably then with respect to subsequent expenditure if the subsequent expenditure incurred is going to increase the efficiency or if it is going to increase the performance as compared to the previously assessed performance then only those subsequent expenditure we can capitalize now here this 23 lakhs paid by the manufacturing company to the legal advisor for defending the patent of the product so let us say example someone might have used our patents and we have uh, put some case or something and we want to defend our uh, patents so for that we are paying this 23 lakhs to the legal advisor is it going to increase the future economic benefit the answer is no so those put patents are mine only i am just putting some legal case or i am paying for the uh, defending this patents of my products so in that case it is not going to increase any efficiency of the asset over and above the originally assessed efficiency or against the performance so sir this will be charged to pnl and so this will go to pnl next during the year 2021 22 company spent 7 lakhs for publicity and research expense on one of its new consumer product which was marketed in the same accounting year but proved to be failure so sir definitely this will go to pnl we cannot recognize this is an intangible asset we cannot add in any of the intangible asset company spent 25 lakhs in the past 3 years to develop a product these expenses were charged to profit and loss account since they did not meet as 26 criteria for capitalization correct in the current year approval of the concern authority has been received the company wishes to capitalize 25 lakhs by disclosing it as a prior period item first of all this cannot be considered as prior period item because this was not error based on the information which was available with us we transfer that entire expenditure to penal we written off the entire expenditure to penal we didn't recognize that particular amount as an intangible asset now they are saying that in the current year approval of the concern notice has been received and we will get the benefit so what we are supposed to do first of all this is not a prior bad item and we are not even going to do the rectification of error that i am going to tell you once the expenditure is written off in penal we cannot reverse unless and until it is rectification but this is not rectification of errors it is not like that sir we made the error earlier we were aware that we 
will get the future economic benefit but we transfer that entire amount of expenditure to pnl so this is not the error first of all because earlier whatever information was available with us we return of that entire amount to pnl so in that particular case sir this is not a prior item we cannot do the rectification once the expenditure is transferred to pnl we cannot reverse it unless and until it is a rectification but this is not rectification so we cannot do anything the treatment given by the company that is it will be transferred to pnl or it has a transfer to pnl and we cannot reverse that is correct last so sir we are not supposed to do anything in the third part last one company with a turnover of 200 crore and an annual advertising budget of 50 lakhs had taken up for the marketing of a new product by a company it was estimated that the company would have a turnover of 20 crore from the new product okay so they are going to get the future economic benefit as they are saying company had debited to its profit and loss account the total expenditure of 50 lakhs incurred on extensive special initial advertisement campaign for the new product so the sir treatment given by the company is correct see as26 does not allow deferment of advertisement expense which says the expenditure incurred in the year in which we should transfer it to pnl we cannot defer so sir the treatment given by the company is absolutely correct let us move to the last question that is nothing but of AS29 provisions contingent liability and contingent asset. The similar question is there in JKC textbook. A limited provides after sales warranty for two years to its customers. Based on the past experience, the company has the following policy for making provision for warranties on the invoice amount on the remaining balance warranty period. So first of all here we are supposed to create the provision only and uh, how we are supposed to create the provision they are telling us they are telling us that please create provision based on the balance warranty period we are providing warranty and warranty period is of two years so it totally depends on the balance warranty period we have to create a provision so we can see here if the balance warranty period is less than one year we have to create two percent provision if the balance warranty period is more than one year then we have to create a three percent provision the company has raised invoices as under so there are three invoices Calculate the provision to be made for warranty under AS29 as at 31st March 2021 and 31st March 2022. So I'll write as on 31st of March 2021 as on 31st of March 2022. Okay. Also compute amount to be debited to PNL for the year ending 31st March 2022. First of all, we have to check the balance warranty period and then accordingly we will create the provision. If I'm talking about the first invoice, we sold goods on 11th of February 2020 and the warranty period is two years from the date of sale. Now, let us focus right now as on 31st March 2021. It means I'm standing on 31st March 2021. I have to check on this particular product balance warranty period is less than one year or more than one year. Okay. So if we can see as on 31st March 2021, so the balance warranty period on this first product which we have sold on 11th of February, so already one year is passed, one year is over. So sir, in that particular case, the balance warranty period is less than one year, we have to create 2% provision. So if I want to write here 60k into 2%, so that will give me 1200. Okay, now let us see the second date that is 25th of December 2020 so 25th of December 2020 if here I am saying that the balance warranty period is more than one year so here we need 3% provision 40,000 into 3% that is nothing but 1200 so 4th of October 2021 sir the product is not yet sold only so there is no present obligation arising out of past event or obligating event. So obligating event that is sale of goods is not done only. So the warranty is not yet started. So we are not supposed to create any provision. Okay. So not applicable. So sir, total provision if I am saying as on 31st March 2021. That is how much? So that is 2400. We want 2400 as on 31st March 2021 in our balance sheet as a provision for this repairs and maintenance of warranty expenses okay next let us see now as on 31st March 2022 sir first product or I can say first sale of goods 11th of February 2020 so two years already lapsed 
टू इयर्स ऑलरेडी लैप्स ऑन इलेवंथ ऑफ फेब्रुआरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू और कैन से टेंथ ऑफ फेब्रुआरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू सर टू ईयर्स लैप्स तो सर वारंटी लैप्स नो प्रोविजन नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ ऑफ डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सर द बैलेंस वारंटी पीरियड इज लेस दैन वन ईयर वी नीड टू परसेंट प्रोविजन सो इट इज फोर्टी के इन टू टू परसेंट दैट इज एट हंड्रेड and last is 4th of october 2021 sir balance warranty period is more than 1 year so here it is 1 lakh 35000 into 3% so it is nothing but sir 4050 so sir the total provision which we want is 4050 plus 800 that is 4850 now If I'm talking about as on 31st March 2020, we need a provision of 4850. We are already having a provision of 2400. We are already having a provision of 2400. Then how much additional provision we have to create from P&L? So we have to create provision from this P&L amounting to rupees so 2450. So this will be debited in the P&L for the year ending 31st March 2022. So let us see the answer. If you can see the amount debited to profit and loss account, that is the two four five zero. So with this, all questions of accounting standards of Paper Five Advanced Accounting RTP May two thousand twenty three examination is over. Thank you so much. God bless. All the very best.